Hey guys, it's me, here, back at you guys with another video, and today is going to be something very different, and today I'm going to be doing an MCU tier list, which is basically a, if you don't know how a tier list works, it's basically you're given a list of different things, and in it you have, and you're supposed to rank them from S tier, which is the highest, and F tier, which is the lowest. So, I'm going to be ranking all the MCU movies and series from best to worst, technically. I don't know if it's best to worst, it's just going random so first up we have the incredible hulk now incredible hulk it's an okay movie i'm not the biggest fan of it there are a bunch of plot holes here and there and it feels a little sloppy but i'm gonna put this at c tier i feel like with a bunch of hulk adaptations they haven't been as good as they should be in the comics if they did world war hulk into a movie or show that'd be pretty epic because we did get scar at the end of she hulk season one this is my son, Scar. Uh, next up, we have the first Iron Man movie. Okay, you gotta know, this movie is definitely going S tier. This is a perfect superhero movie in general. I love this so much. I love Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. He played it perfectly. Everything fits together neatly. The CGI, the fighting, it's really awesome. Story, beautifully done. The accuracy of the comics, especially the flashback sequence to Addy Granov in the cave. In Iron Man Extremis, if you haven't read that or seen the scene I'm talking about, it is where he escapes the cave. It's, a, it's very accurate to the comics and I love it so much. Next up, we have Iron Man 2, which I'm definitely going to be putting also in s tier because it is a very underrated movie in my opinion it's actually really good it has the same vibes as the first movie it's very underrated i really enjoyed it a lot i would recommend watching it for the full iron man storyline thor i would definitely be putting at b tier it's not great but it's not bad it's not terrible it's not great it does set up the thor world the cgi is amazing it's just not the best thing i've seen i put it at a b tier definitely like a 6.5 out of 10 Next up, we have Captain America, the first Avenger. I'm putting this movie at A tier. Some of the CGI is slightly wonkified in some scenes, and some of the and some of the shots are slightly janky, but I love this movie. I really love it. It's a really good movie. The story is good. It's beautiful. I totally recommend you watch it. Next up, Avengers. Definitely going to be putting this at A tier as well. Reason for that being, actually, I'm going to scoot you up here for a bit. I love this movie a lot. The way they did it is beautifully well done. They really do Robert Downey Jr. justice and have the characters Iron Man really well. Go check it out. Watch all phase one first before you do anything. Next up is Iron Man 3. I need to scooch this in. It really completes the trilogy of Iron Man. It sets up a really great story. All Iron Man movies are basically S tier. I'm putting them all next to each other. All right, Thor Dark World. We, we don't talk about it. It's an okay movie. I, there are, it, there are some parts that are really good. I just don't like it. <laughs> Captain America Winter Soldier. That movie is definitely S tier. I think it's the first movie the Russo brothers ever did for Marvel. You right. And it is beautifully done. Everything feels grounded and f military like Captain America is supposed to feel. The hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes and like the fight choreography is beautifully mastered. It really sets up the story really well and the reveal. Even for fans who already know it's Bucky, it still sets up that same heartbreaking moment when he finds out. All right, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. This movie, I'm putting it at S tier as well. There are going to be a few movies on here that are going to definitely be S tier. Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one, it is really well done. James Gunn did an amazing job. He understood the assignment with all the Guardians movies. They're all really well done. That is pretty awesome. It is a beautiful movie. The effects are amazing. The comedy is superb. All right, uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. <laughs> Ant-Man, one. Definitely putting this up at A tier. There are a few things they could have done differently, but it feels very good. It's a great heist movie. I totally recommend it. It's fun. It's really good. Next up, Captain America, Civil War. It's not my favorite of the Captain America movies. Uh, my favorite one has to be Winter Soldier. All right, Doctor Strange. Oh, Doctor Strange, definitely beyond, beyond S tier. It is Z tier. That movie is beautifully well done. The music and the visuals and the story is complete and accurate. It is amazing. I totally love it so much. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I'm putting this one with A tier because I feel like Ego was a good villain. I just feel like the setup was not 
fully there, but it was still a great movie. A Spider-Man Homecoming. I definitely put this one at S tier. It really fits Ultimate Spider-Man vibes and fits like Peter Parker and high school years vibe. And we see that more throughout John Watts's Spider-Man movies, which is what MCU Spider-Man is. It is really good seeing Tony be like a father figure after Uncle Ben died and seeing Michael Keaton as the vulture is insane. Michael Keaton played a great vulture. That is, that is really good. All right, uh, Thor Ragnarok. I'm putting this up here with the goodies. This is my favorite Thor movie, period. All right, Black Panther, definitely S tier. Like it had, it felt like a cool video game. It was so much fun. And also the story representing African-American culture. That was very awesome. Slightly political, but also dealt with like problems that are actually in the world, which is what comic books are technically supposed to be. Infinity War, great setup. Uh, great setup to end game. Wouldn't consider it S tier though. It is beautifully well done. I just wish that they did it entirely as one movie as like sort of like Zack Snyder's Justice League. So it paid off. The way was worth it, Endgame, definitely an S-tier movie. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, I definitely wouldn't consider it like S-tier, but I would. it's so close to being S-tier. Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, with the first Ant-Man movie, A-tier, still the same vibes and the feel. I definitely wouldn't consider it S-tier, but it is a really good movie. Captain Marvel, putting it at C-tier. It was an okay movie. It wasn't my favorite. I thought Brie Larson in the beginning of the movie was just definitely a bit of a bully. With Captain Marvel, I thought it was slightly flimsy and they didn't feel accurate to the Kree Skull to the Kree Scroll War. Next up, uh, WandaVision. This is definitely going S tier. It really had me guessing throughout the entirety. It was so much fun. I love it so much. It is good. I totally recommend it. Great setup. If you uh, you have to watch Infinity War for this to make sense, and then you have to watch this for Multiverse of Madness to make sense. Uh, next up, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Really good. Um, I'm definitely going to be putting this at. It's a hard call. Yeah, I'm just going to put it at A tier. It, it's a it's a it's a war show essentially. Loki, no contest. Loki, Black Widow, D. Bad movie. It was just bad because the story felt flimsy and it didn't ha answer any of the questions we wanted. It would have made it would have made a better story if we saw more of the Red Room and saw more of her origins. It would have definitely made that a better movie and show like her going into Shield. Like that would have made it a better movie. Okay, what if S tier? Great show, animation, amazing. Oh, that that's not S. S tier, definitely. Legend of the Ten Rings. S tier. Uh, Eternals. This is gonna get me killed, but I'm gonna be putting the Eternals at A tier. Reason being, because I love the Eternals, I actually am reading Jack Kirby's Eternals on this, and the same with, I'm currently reading this far in with Peter B. Gillis's Eternals. I feel like if you read the books, and especially Neil Gaiman's Eternals, like the movie does make sense. And if you understand the lore of the Eternals, it also makes sense. Only thing I would change if they did it as a series, instead of a movie if it if they did it as a series and way more time to explain all the lore that would have made it that that people probably would have been more happy but i like it anyway i really hope icarus comes back he was my favorite character people are gonna hang on me for that but i really liked icarus <laughs> i hope in the sequel they do bring them back and show all the eternals because there are 100 hawkeye i'm gonna put this at b it was a good christmas story good holiday show i feel like the setup to kingpin was okay and I really hope this sets up well for Echo, which is coming out in January. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. This was a masterpiece of a Spider-Man movie. I know it, like a lot of it was fan service, especially with Toby and Andrew showing up in the movie. Raimi and Mark Webb villains showing up. It was still so much fun. A lot of the lines, it was just so much fun. And it really brought a great conclusion to the Spider-Man story. It was so much fun. Moon Knight. No fucking contest. I'm actually going to put this above Iron Man. I love Iron Man, but just Moon Knight. I literally found this out. I literally discovered Moon Knight right as they announced Phase 4. And then I got into the comics. And then I fell in love with him instantly. As a person who actually also somewhat goes through mental health issues. I really felt like at peace with the character. Or just like I felt like a good connection. Seeing this, it was just so much fun. I love it. I really hope they do a Season 2. Kevin Feige, make it happen or I will come for you. Multiverse of Madness, really good. I love the Illuminati. I hope we get more of the Illuminati in Marvel. This was so much fun. I really, I put this at S tier. The visuals were amazing. Sam Raimi did an amazing job. I really hope they, we, we get more of it. We get more of something similar in Doctor Strange 3. I really love this movie. It was so much fun. Miss Marvel, I put it at a B. 
I really love, again, we see like the high school setup. Slightly felt way too similar to Tom Holland's Spider-Man, but I love the representation in this. Oh, well, the last two episodes could have been better, but overall, I put this at a B. It was an okay series. I liked it. It was so much fun. Uh, Love and Thunder, I'm definitely going to be putting this movie at E. This is one of the few movies I'm putting at E tier. All right, uh, She-Hulk. E. Only redeeming quality that does not make it an F is that Daredevil is in it, and I really love Charlie Cox. He did. He still had that Matt Murdock in him. Werewolf by Night, definitely putting this S tier. This was so much fun to watch, especially in the in-color version, because, again, we got to see what all the colors were. It was beautifully done, black and white, reminding me very much of, like, universal old 1930 horror movies like Boris Karloff as Frankenstein and the Mummy, Dracula, etc. That was so much fun to watch, and I and seeing Man-Thing in the... And seeing Man Thing in this universe, it was so much fun. It was beautifully well done. I really hope they do a Man Thing project. Wakanda Forever, this made me cry. This was a good movie. Quantum Mania, only redeeming factor in this is Kang. And even then, he got defeated by ants. Guardians Volume 3, at S tier. We got High Evolutionary as a main villain. And High Evolutionary was evil. He didn't need a reason. Like, his mommy didn't love him or something like that. Even Peter Quill mocks, like, the villain trope in comic book movies. I just laughed so hard and I, I just seen High Evolutionary just like, I'm doing it for the purposes of science. Or like Ultra, I'm just doing it for the purpose to save the world. It, it was it, like that, like those two villains just they go hand in hand and make a great villain. It was so much fun. Uh, Guardians Holiday Special. It was a holiday special. I loved it. Secret Invasion. I actually really enjoyed the show. It was so much fun. It was, it was very different from all the other superhero stuff. It very, it it did good to like veer from the superhero path that still had that superhero aspect with the scrolls and such, but it just had a very spy movie moment. It, it, it was so much fun. It was like Mission Impossible. It was really fun. I put it at A tier. There were th uh, the finale could have been a lot better. Marvels. I saw this on my own. You see, the movies that escape F tier, like and into E tier, the only movies that do that are the ones that have one redeemable factor. And the one redeemable factor in this is A, we get the multiverse MP, we get the X-Men, we get Kelsey Grammer back as Beast. And I'm hoping we see more of it and we see the X-Men finally make their appearance in the MCU. Um, yeah, this is my tier list for every MCU project that I've seen. Daredevil and the Defenders series weren't on this list. I don't know why, I guess, because Tier Maker is bullshit. Dare, the Daredevil show definitely goes up in S tier. Punisher, A tier. Iron Fist, C. Uh, Luke Cage, B. Jessica Jones, A. I could do like an entire tier list on all the side movies as well, like Sony's thing and Fox thing. A, second favorites. Uh, B, third favorites. C, fourth favorites. Rest are garbage. I really hope you don't get mad at me for this. I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, thank you everybody so much for watching and please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Tap the notification bell so you never miss a video from me. Let me know what you guys think, what your tier list is for MCU and tell me what your favorites are in the comments down below. 2024 is just going to be an amazing year. If you didn't know, I'm actually recording this New Year's Eve. And so if you guys are watching this and this video is going to be releasing after New Year. So happy New Year, everybody. But I hope we get, uh, I hope the MCU is is going to release some great stuff in the future. I don't, we don't know what it is going to be for like phase six or stuff. Unfortunately, Kane Dynasty is off the map. I wonder how they're going to remedy that because Marvel was knee deep into it when they made every single version Jonathan Majors. Yeah, but uh, thank you everyone so much for watching. And until next week, I will see you guys in the next video. Um, Bye.